Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh Troke out here bringing you all the breaking news going on in motorcycles and power sports. For today's show, we've got our usual stories going on. I've also got the new trailer for a brand new series that's going to be hitting the internets in January called Two Wheels, Two Ways. And so my stories for today, let's go ahead and chat about them. My very first story is going to be a triumphant return at AIM Expo. And my second story is going to be talking a little bit about a brand new bike from the folks at Royal Enfield. Josh, what you got going on in your neck of the woods? Wow. The drama in that was just, I mean, I saw the <laughs> drama mask there. So I am talking about two bikes that KTM's releasing that are a little bit special. And I am talking about Honda making a little bit bit easier on uh, your left hand and no i don't hmm. mean when you hit me <laughs> <laughs> well we're all you have to wait and hear what on earth josh is talking about after this word from our sponsor Welcome back, everybody. As I mentioned at the very top of the program, we've got a little bit of a theme going on in my neck of the woods because my first story for today is chatting about a triumphant return to AIM Expo. And then our trailer in the middle of, the middle of today's program, Two Wheels, Two Ways, is about an epic ride out to AIM Expo. So you're not going to want to miss it. So my very first story, however, that is right. If you're heading out to AIM Expo, Triumph Motorcycles is back, baby, back, and they're bringing all sorts of awesome new bikes for people to come in and check out. So make sure you don't miss it. Get yourself signed up. Head over to the AIM Expo website for more information. Let's go ahead and jump on into the story. The folks at Triumph are going to be making a return to AIM Expo for 2024. They're going to be having their growing lineup of Triumph motorcycles, and they're going to be introducing that brand Offset, which they purchased in 2022, which is an off-road e-bike company. By the way, we covered that news here on the program back in 2022. Um, and then the our dealer development team will also be on site, so there will be opportunities for interested dealers to inquire about becoming a Triumph or Offset retailer. The British brand will showcase all of its latest models, including an all-new motorcycle, to be unveiled in early January. So this is even going to be like a sneak peek brand new bike among motorcycles rolling into the convention center will be the speed 400 and scrambled 400x woohoo! as well as the much anticipated tf 250x motocross machine josh that's right the 250 motocross bike is going to be there triumph also plans plans to bring the scrambler 1200 x and xe the tiger 900 gt pro the tiger 900 rally pro the thruxton final edition ultimate sex bomb gorgeous bike is going to be there as well and then, of course, those OSET electric bikes are going to be there. I cannot wait for AIM Expo this year. Again, AIM Expo is February 6th, 7th, and 8th out in beautiful Las Vegas. If you have not made plans, head over to AIM Expo website, get all the information. But more importantly, book your hotel like right now because that week around that time frame is Super Bowl and it's in Las Vegas as well. So you got you got to act fast. You got to go ahead and take care of business. Josh, what do you think about the brand Triumph and Oset coming to AIM Expo? First off, the way you introduced this, I felt like I should be playing a trumpet and announcing the the <laughs> da, 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 something like that um, in a very midi yeah in a medieval way. Um, <laughs> it's good to see them back. I mean, and it's good for them to have these things that I mean. Triumph is obviously trying to make a resurgence. There's new models. They're changing things. They're going after new audiences. Um, the fact that we've actually seen photos of the uh, TF, um, I'm excited that it will be there in person. Um, Osets, I mean, it's a company that I've followed for a while. I mean, they make great little electric trials bikes that are awesome, and they make some that, I mean, it's a great way to start the kids out with trial stuff. Um, the, there's no better way to learn bike handling than to make someone do trial stuff. So to have them as part of that, have them there, I love it. Um, it's really, it's just all good news through and through. It's all good news through and through. I cannot wait. If I, if, if my energy is not giving you enough of a clue, I personally am <laughs> pumped to see the folks at Triumph out at AIM Expo this year, because they've got a couple of beautiful bikes that I can't wait to check out. All right, Josh, what you got going on for your first story? 
Um, KTM has released the 2024 factory edition 450 and 250 bikes. You know what these are? These are basically what's probably going to end up being the 2025 models that they are selling enough of. So that way they can race <laughs> AMA Supercross and Motocross with them. This has a new frame with optimized flex characteristics. We've all heard Jeremy McGrath talking about that 1997 CR250 and how he basically wanted to chuck it in the can. Um, making sure that the frames flex correctly and at the right time, that is huge. So trying to get that dialed in. Um, CNC milled orange anodized triple clamps for precise steering and fork alignment, um, revised suspension settings for both bikes, um, comes with an exhaust on it. It's also got an updated air intake, twin air filter, um, Hinson clutch cover for added protection because it's a dirt bike. You're going to throw it on the ground pretty hard. The big news with this is there is a new connectivity unit uh, that's offered that allows engine and suspension adjustments that you can look at this mm. and remap the engine through this. The big thing is, mm. is it also has GPS enabled on it. So you can go back and look at line, speed, gearing, other track data. Mm. Um, this is, I mean, this has been in so many other motorsports for years. The fact that now it is coming to the dirt bike side of things. I don't want to say it isn't a surprise, but it's, I'm really glad to see it. It's finally gotten cheap enough that they can put something on here reliably. Um, you, we know you're going to bin it. We know you're going to chuck it at the scenery. So making sure that they can make something that's tough enough to deal with that is really good. So another things we're seeing is new radiator shrouds, revised fuel tank holder, um, orange factory frame protectors, because those are a big, th big <laughs> selling point. Um, all sorts of like ODI grips, DID wheels, gold chain, Dunlop tires, um, a stiffer rear brake pedal was something that they pointed out with a semi floating front disc. That is unique hmm. and interesting. Um, don't see as much of that in the dirty world. Um, this will be available at KTM dealers from mid-February. Pricing and other information is not available. Like I said, this is probably what we're going to see in the 2025 bikes, which is weird for me to stay so, say still because it's still 2004, right, Jackie? Um, and these <laughs> bikes are typically offered one year earlier. Um, it's really, it's the, the upgrades on these are, it's aimed at the person that wants to go out and race and learn from it, especially with the telemetry stuff mm -hmm. on it. Um, there's always questions that if the new chassis is going to be better, worse, or the same, it's going to feel like you're at the eye doctor, better, worse, or the same, better, worse, or the same. <laughs> Overall, I think it's great looking. What do you think about the new telemetry stuff? That is something that's interesting. I think this is really, really fascinating. And there's a couple of really key things that you touched on here that made my ears immediately perk up, including the technology that, that's on the screen right now. I love that it's got this kind of GPS enabled system going on. That way you can, you know, some sort of smart system happening here because it clearly can like yep. map your routes. I wonder now, because it's clearly app based, you can see it on the phone that they're showing right now. So what else does this app do? Can you share that route? Can you share these locations? Uh, does this work as also a theft deterrent? I'm just kind of curious about what that what that technology looks like all the way around. What do you think? Uh, to me, I, I mean, the, the biggest thing that they say it's aimed at is for you to figure out what lines you're taking. So, and, and for me as, as a track guy, you try multiple lines and you think you have an idea. You're like, oh, that's faster. It may not be. So with this, this allows you to go back and look and say, okay, when I took that line, I felt fast, but it was slow. Um, that's when the kid nice. on the 80 usually passes me. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, Hey, that felt fast as the kid on the, on the, on the 20 year old, YZ80 comes, right. Comes, comes zinging past me. So that is what's the, that is going to be the big help with this. But once again, I mean, like we've seen in so many things recently, data, 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 and a little more data. And now, I mean, when we've yeah. got data like this and as AI starts to come more online to put this in here and to start getting AI, AI track analysis to get, I mean, the possibilities with this are just insane. This is that first step. Like a lot of people thought disc brakes were, nah, they're okay, but maybe they work better. This is that first disc break. In five years, this is going to look completely different, but we got to go through that first step. So I, to me, hmm, it is the start of a huge change in racing dirty stuff.
Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, I'm excited to see where we're going with that. Um, for my next story, talking about new stuff, I've got a new bike from the folks over at Royal Enfield. But before we jump into that story, let's go ahead and check out a trailer for a web series here on MPN called Two Wheels, Two Ways. I'm Jackie Van Ham. I've been around the country and around the planet writing about, talking about, reporting on, and being a part of the world of motorcycles and power sports. When my friend Patrick contacted me to see if I wanted to ride the 2,000 miles to attend the 2024 AIM Expo, how could I say no? Together we'll explore motorcycle and power sports culture and meet some amazing people along the way. Join us on this incredible adventure as we ride to AIM Expo on two wheels, two ways. Think email marketing is outdated as a carburetor? Think again. Joe coming at you with another doozy. Boost your customer engagement with email marketing. Supercharge your open and click rates by segmenting your list and breaking down your e-blast by your audience's favorite vehicles. You'll see those metrics skyrocket. And before hitting send, use a tool like subjectline.com to check your email's deliverability. Test, test, and test again. Want to make sure your inbox is a sales machine? Click the link to let us guide you. Stay tuned for more pit stop pointers. Clunky DMS software at work and beautiful software in your personal life? Check out Black Pearl at blackpearl.com, a game changer designed for modern dealers. Simplify your operations with Black Pearl. Don't let outdated DMS technology hold your business back. Huge thanks to our mid-show partners and the trailer for Two Wheels, Two Ways. How fun was that, Josh? I mean, it looks like a good time, especially for you that likes people. For me to hide away from people, I would, <laughs> I would have taken back. I would have you. You went towards the people. I'd go running the other direction. But it looks like it's going to be fun. No, we had a heck of a good time. We had a great route coming from the middle part of America all the way out to Las Vegas. Tons of adventures and laughs were had. So make sure you go ahead, hit that like, hit that subscribe. You're not going to want to miss it. That series is going to be launching in January. Now for my second story for today, as I mentioned, there's a brand new motorcycle from the folks at Royal Enfield. But is it? Yes, it's a brand new bike, but it is utilizing that 650 twin platform that I had the good fortune of going out for their launch of that new Super Meteor 650, um, the cruiser bike in Dallas a handful of months ago. We talked about it here on the program and I gave you some of my feedback about that bike. I got to tell you, this engine, I had a heck of a great time. It had really good power, really smooth. It was full of, I was really, really pleasantly surprised by the fit, finish, and quality of it. And the slide on your screen right now is showing you the next bike off of that platform. So let's go ahead and jump on into the details of this brand new motorcycle from the folks at Royal Enfield. This is the Royal Enfield Shotgun 650. This is a custom concept. It is now officially a production model. There was praise and loads of positive feedback because this SG650 concept bike that was floating around out of ICMA in 2021, people absolutely lost their marbles about it. They were kind of teasing out some cool custom concepts. And then finally now here is the actual bike um, being delivered. Uh, it's a really great looking bike. It's a new cruiser. It's got a bit of a custom vibe. So again, we're on that same kind of like cruiser platform as the Super Meteor 650. But this is obviously a little bit more like bobber vibes, a little bit more of a custom bike vibe. I think that this is just a really good looking bike. It's got a 46.4 horsepower. So plenty of juice to get around town and enough to go out on the highway. It does have a six speed gearbox. Uh, which I thought was great. It has an 18 inch front, 17 inch rear. So it's got that really nice, very kind of standard stance. Um, it is 25.3 degrees, which is a, um, hold on one second. Mid mount controls also appear on this shotgun. All those tweaks result in a shorter wheelbase on the new bike 
at 57.6 inches, a tighter rake at 25.3 degrees, a taller seat, sorry about that, at 31.3 inches, an ever so slightly lighter curb weight at 529 pounds. So I thought that this was really interesting because it's a little bit shorter, but a little bit taller and a little bit more custom vibes. I can't wait to see it live and in person. They just had a launch this past week out at the LA uh, Bike Shed, and there was some custom bikes on display, including a customized version of this from the folks over at Roland Sands Design. The gentleman uh, who will build a bike for anybody on the planet and always makes a great looking bike in the process. So Josh, what do you think about this cool looking new kind of bobber custom bike vibe from the folks at Royal Enfield? It is interesting to me because this has some very Harley design elements to it. Um, and what I find so interesting about that is it's got it's got a cross between that Harley bobber and a Triumph a little bit. If, if you left those two alone in the garage at night, this I think this is what you would get in the morning. Um, yes. So that being said, what I find so interesting about this is that with Harley losing market share, it makes you wonder, is it the bikes is it the price point or is it just missing the mark on a few things because if royal enfield sees this styling as something to go after they may be on to something and especially with the price points that royal enfield typically comes in at now royal enfield is not the bottom of the barrel but they are a great value proposition and i think that's why royal enfield has done so well over the past couple of years you get a whole heck of a lot of bike for not a whole heck of a lot of money. So to me, I think this is an interesting one. I, I I mean, I do like the look of it. You know, I'm not a cruiser guy, but it is a good looking bike. And to me, I think they're going to sell as many of them as they want to. That is going to be the interesting thing to see. This year is going to be a very interesting year when it comes to all the new bikes and everything like that that's coming out. I'm excited for it. Tons of options. Yeah. So the thing that uh, that I kind of want to touch on is the fact that there's a lot of motorcycle manufacturers, Royal Enfield included, that are using the word cruiser. And in my mind, this isn't really so much of a cruiser as it is a little bit more of like a retro bike to me. To me, it speaks, it sure. feels way more like bobber. Um, and I think it's just kind of a great looking standard bike. I think it's kind of, you know, it ain't your granddad's cruiser anymore. You kind of, I think we kind of have to steer a little <laughs> bit marketing wise away from that. But I absolutely see a place for this bike because it's got tons and oodles and oodles of style. It will come in at a great price point. I did have the chance to ride the more comfy, more cruisery version of this in this in the Super Meteor 650. And I had a ball. It just the fit and finish was fabulous on it. It went down the road really, really nicely. If you have not had the chance to ride a Royal Enfield, a new Royal Enfield, um, do yourself a solid head to the dealership and throw a leg over one because this is full of surprises. And that bike came in around like seven thousand dollars so i think this is really really smart i think this is a way more accessible in many different ways including price tag bike um it's a lot of bang for the buck uh i'm really excited to see what happens josh what you got going on for your second story today um we're removing obstacles from entry-level motorcycles or just from people that when they get stuck in traffic want to ride off of a bridge honda <laughs> is changing the clutch but they really aren't so Honda has been known to do a ton of revolutionary things, and this one is called the E-Clutch. Now, everyone knows about the DCT transmission, and it's been funny because most of the reviews of the DCT transmission are like, hey, this thing works better than we expected. Well, mm -hmm. Honda realizes that a lot of people still want some manual control over things, but they may not want it all the time or whatever. So what this is, is this is a setup that actuates the clutch for you much like let's say a recluse would but this is all electronic so it takes a little more ecu power but what it does is it looks at it looks at hill angle it looks at throttle it looks at um, engine load it looks at all sorts of different things and decides on how much clutch to feed out in the same sense when you go to start shifting it's also going to pull the clutch and let it back out in a way that's not just snapping it back out so you get rear tire chatter. Now, this was mm. a, unveiled a little while ago. This is available on the CB650R and the CBR650R. 
always weird how they put the R's in weird places for Honda. It's just <laughs> what they do. Um, I know Suzuki does that too sometimes. But there's a number of different modes with this too. So you can put it in full auto mode and it will do the clutch for you. Now you still have to shift. My first four-wheeler, I started out on a YFM80 uh, Yamaha Moto4. That had a centrifugal clutch. It made learning how to shift super easy, super great, taking off, starting, stopping, all that stuff. I didn't have to worry. I just had to hit the go and then shift. This will allow people to do the same thing, but you can shut this system off if you want full manual control over that clutch. That is what I think is so cool with this. It works with all the existing wet plate, wet multi-plate clutch systems, even slipper systems. It adds some EC, you need some ECU computing power to handle this. So typically there's a different ECU mm -hmm. with this, but it uses two motors in this. So you know it can snap that clutch open and closed rather quickly. Um, it prioritizes rider control. So if you pull the clutch in, it's not going to argue with you. You can see the two motors and all the gears in it to actuate it. You can see all it's hmm. doing is it's pulling the clutch for you in here. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it makes it does it in a way that the lever is isn't just going to hang there and go limp and rattle around and make all sorts of noise for you. Um, like I said, it's available on the 2024 CB 650R and the CBR 650R. I don't. The, my question is with this is I don't think those were necessarily the right bikes to put it on from the start. Um, something a bit smaller, a bit more entry would have probably been my choice, but I'm sure Honda had their reasons for this. Now, there are some concerns about um, complexity and repairability with this, but when you look, I don't see anything that's that terribly complex that's not already pretty reliable. I think Honda is onto something because of the fact you can do both manual mode and automatic mode. I know mm -hmm, you live mm -hmm. in town, Jack. You're at least close to it. I'm assuming there yep. are days when you're sitting in traffic where you look at your left hand and you're like, can I just cut this thing off? <laughs> <laughs> Heck yes. Yeah, I, I am here for it. This is, a, this is a yes for me. I love this. I love that they're using this technology. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to me. Automatic motorcycles are not new. They have been around. No. Their Honda has even dabbled in the automatic game back in the 1970s. CBTs, and then, you know, of yes. course, correct. So, so this is not new. It keeps kind of like coming and going in waves. I just wonder if this is finally right place, right time, because we are trying to court so many new motorcyclists and yep. we're really trying to drop the bar to entry by making these even easier to get on and and just go ride and not really not really be intimidated by having to clutch and right. shift because a lot of beginning riders are I talked to I talked to either new motorcyclists or people that are just motorcycle curious all the time and it's the it's the it's at the top of the list of things that they're absolutely in a panic attack about before they've even gotten on a bike so I love that this is an option to, to remove that bar to entry but you can still ride it like a normal motorcycle if you yep. if you want um i think that's great i think that that's wonderful yeah. i am i am here for it this is a yes for me um it's a real head scratcher that it's on this on that 600 r i don't know if they consider that their kind of entry level or beginner bike i don't know either. I, I don't it, it's it's Maybe interesting it's to me it's it, it it could have just been a good fit engineering wise right off the bat ah, um that's, that's the only thing that i can think of with that but to me there's a ton of other bikes that would be i mean that i mean you you look at the uh crf 2 or 300l boy that would have been one that to me is like the the perfect one to start on and uh they picked yeah. this so i don't know it could be electrical load weight there's a ton of other engineering reasons that i can think of why they would do this but Boy, get that on some other yep. bikes, and I think you got a hot seller. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, and maybe this is just their 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 way of putting the toe in the water and seeing what the feedback is, seeing if the bike even sells through. So we're all going to have to wait yeah. and see. You know that the second we hear about any of this breaking news, we're going to be bringing it to you here on the program as we have done for two years now, Josh. That's right. We're wow. like at episode 114 and some change um, yeah. out here bringing you, the new, bringing you the news and breaking stories every single week. Huge thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in every week. We appreciate you, whether you're watching out there on the Facebooks or on the Instagrams or on the YouTubes or at our uh, parent website, which is motorcyclepowersportsnews.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will see you next week.